Hi, I'm Luke McIndoe. I'm very excited to be here today to talk about the amazing world of algae. Algae helped make the earth a home fit for humans. Now they may help protect the planet from our impact. So what are algae? Most people will be familiar with the algae on the seashore, but they are much, much more. They come in all shapes and sizes, from 80 meter kelps that grow half a meter a day, to the symbiotic coral algae that give corals their vivid colors and provide their energy, to microscopic algae that require powerful microscopes to see their intricate structures. They are also found wherever you find water, living in salt water, fresh water, ice, soil, and hot springs. But it is through the process of photosynthesis, the ability to harness energy from sunlight and use this energy to convert CO2 into food whilst releasing oxygen, that they are vital to our planet. In fact, algae are so good at photosynthesis that they fix approximately 50% of the carbon dioxide on the planet. This is the same as all of the land plants put together. This includes trees, grasses, and crops. By harnessing this incredible CO2 fixing efficiency of algae, we can address some of the challenges we are facing on our planet due to an ever increasing global population. These include the need to produce more food and to combat global warming due to the release of CO2 from burning fossil fuels. If we go back in time, and I mean geological time, we can see that algae made our planet habitable and enabled the evolution of complex life and hence humans. In this figure, I'm showing how atmospheric oxygen levels changed over the course of planet Earth's history. Our planet is around four and a half billion years old. Approximately three and a half billion years ago, simple algae called cyanobacteria evolved. Through photosynthesis, they started capturing sunlight, fixing carbon dioxide and releasing oxygen, which resulted in a great oxygenation event that enabled the evolution of eukaryotic life. Later, somewhere around one billion years ago, eukaryotic algae evolved and further oxygenated our atmosphere. This oxygen rich environment enabled the evolution of complex organisms, which led to the rise of land plants, mammals, and subsequently humans. So as you can see, algae have played a fundamental role in shaping both our planet and our evolution. However, our understanding of algae is still in its infancy. To address this, I have built a strong international team and network to understand fundamental questions about why and how algae are so efficient at fixing carbon dioxide. My team are using diverse algae and applying a broad range of methods with the goals to guide plant engineering to improve crops, to initiate novel carbon capture solutions, and to provide platforms for the sustainable green biotechnology industry. To achieve this, we're using cutting edge microscopy, systems and synthetic biology, and biochemistry to understand gene function. Collectively, this is giving us a rapid and unprecedented knowledge of carbon dioxide fixation at the University of York. So, why are algae so good at fixing carbon dioxide? One of the key reasons is that they have evolved a photosynthetic turbocharger called the pyranoid. The pyranoid is a large focus of our work. Here, I'm showing you an image of an algal cell zoomed over 10,000 times. In magenta is a chloroplast where sunlight is captured. Highlighted in blue is a pyranoid 
and is where all of the enzyme Rubisco is found. Rubisco is one of the most important enzymes on planet Earth, as it is responsible for nearly all of the carbon dioxide fixed by living organisms. In order to maximize Rubisco's efficiency, algae tightly package it into the pyrenoid. They then deliver high concentrations of Rubisco's substrate, carbon dioxide, to be converted by Rubisco into sugars. This process turbocharges photosynthesis. By fusing fluorescent proteins to different cellular components, we can use advanced microscopy to understand how the pyrenoid is assembled and how it functions. This is now looking at the pyrenoid, shown in blue, in a living cell. It forms a sphere within the chloroplast, shown in magenta. In green are the mitochondria. CO2, carbon dioxide, fixed in the pyrenoid, form sugars that through respiration in the mitochondria provide energy for the cell and releases oxygen into the atmosphere. To enable the assembly of a photosynthetic turbocharger in crops to boost yields, one of our main goals was to determine what proteins make up the pyrenoid. To do this, we fused a fluorescent protein to hundreds of candidate pyrenoid proteins and saw where they localized in the cell. Here in these images, fluorescent proteins are shown in green and the chloroplast in magenta. What we saw is a large number of proteins localizing to different sub pyrenoid regions. This included proteins localizing to the core where Rubisco is found, to the periphery, including a punctate layer and a shell layer and also proteins that traverse the pyrenoid. Together with protein functional data, this allowed us to build a model of the pyrenoid and how it works. This includes the core where Rubisco is fixing carbon dioxide. Traversing the core are phylicoid membranes that deliver carbon dioxide at a high concentration to Rubisco. An outer plate layer glued together by a mesh protein prevents carbon dioxide from escaping out of the pyrenoid. And finally, peripheral proteins are involved in capturing and delivering carbon dioxide to Rubisco in the core of the pyrenoid. When we looked closely at the sequences of the proteins in the pyrenoid, we noticed something very exciting that explained how the pyrenoid is assembled. We noticed that a lot of the protein found in the pyrenoid contain the same short sequence that we called a zip code. This zip code sequence binds Rubisco and appears to determine the composition and organization of the pyrenoid. For example, a protein that links Rubisco together to form the core of the pyrenoid has multiple copies of this zip code. Proteins that assemble the pyrenoid core around membranes have membrane binding regions fused to the zip code. And proteins that assemble the shell around the pyrenoid core also contain this zip code. By adding the zip code to proteins that aren't usually found in the pyrenoid, we could relocate them to the pyrenoid. And by removing the zip code from proteins that are usually found in the pyrenoid, we could prevent them from localizing to the pyrenoid. This is now given as a blueprint for how the pyrenoid is assembled and for how we might be able to assemble the pyrenoid synthetically in plants. One of the next surprising things we found is that the pyrenoid is highly dynamic. Prior to our work, the pyrenoid was always thought to be a relatively rigid structure. When looking at fluorescently labeled Rubisco, we saw that it is continually moving. To do this, we turned off the fluorescent label for half of the Rubisco enzymes in the pyrenoid core and then watched what happens. What we see is that the still fluorescent Rubisco in the pyrenoid rapidly moves into the region where the turned off Rubisco was, thus showing that the pyrenoid is highly dynamic. Next, we wondered what happens to the pyrenoid when a cell divides. Here, we can see a cell dividing twice. 
starting from a single mother cell and resulting in four daughter cells. Again, the pernoid is shown in green and the chlor chloroplast in magenta. What we excitingly observed is that the pernoid splits via fission, but that this fission was what you'd expect of a liquid like droplet. We can watch this happening live. Now we can see a movie of the same division events, just with the pyrenoid shown. Here you can see a single pyrenoid that gets stretched, splits, and then forms two new pyrenoids. This then repeats for the second division event. Collectively, this dynamic behavior and liquid-like properties of the pyrenoid are critical for our understanding and the engineering of a pyrenoid in plants. This engineering is now becoming a real reality, with our collaborators in Edinburgh having now assembled a minimal pyrenoid in plants that looks and behaves just like the algal pyrenoid. Our pyrenoid assembly and functional data is now guiding the continued engineering to make this engineered pyrenoid functional and to turbocharge plant photosynthesis. But back to our planet. Through turbocharging photosynthesis, pyrenoid containing algae have made our planet habitable for complex life. I believe that by understanding this amazing group of organisms and how they fix carbon dioxide has the potential to play an important role in combating climate change and building a sustainable future. Finally, I would like to thank all the funders that have enabled this work the University of York, and my team of fantastic people I work with. And thank you.